whenever you do get to the top of a project, success is kind of short-lived, you know, it's always kind of like on to the next thing. Uh, when we get to one level, we realize that, well, we're actually uh, capable of doing much more than that. Sterling is by far the best rope out there. What a rad project. People come and ask me, like, is there any tips you can give me to get better? And pretty much what I tell them is just climb as much as possible and enjoy it as much as possible, right? And then the rest of the stuff kind of takes care of itself. As long as you're psyched on what you're doing, then things kind of find a way to fall into place, you know? And so, I mean, for me, that's always been my, my theory is just, just go for it and try as hard as possible and climb as much as possible. And But obviously there's a lot of different different things that make success happen you know it's like you know the right conditions the right finger strength endurance and mental focus and tech i think they all play a, a really important role i've seen some people that are super super strong that should be climbing like 515 or something and they're still climbing 512 and that way you can see climbing is really has this mental side to it that is really important it's not just about being super strong it's also being able to to focus that and Energy. direct it in in a way that helps us climb, you know, that helps us get to the top. And vice versa, you know, you can, you can be a really smart climber, really good climber, but take it, you're climbing to that next level, you definitely need that, that finger strength and that power and that endurance. So one, that's one of the things that makes climbing just so interesting is that it's just a really well-rounded sport and it, you have to be not only really strong, but you have to be kind of mentally aware and it's really well-rounded in that way. It kind of forces you to be a, uh, an athlete and uh, does have its intellectual side and the mental game and the focus and that's one of the things that makes climbing just so interesting you know I've been climbing almost 20 years and I'm just as excited as ever about it I know people have been climbing 40 years and they're just as excited and I think it's it's one of those sports that it never gets old and every route we do is totally different and unique and every place we go is totally different and unique so it's pretty cool in that way it's um, if you compare it to like a, a basketball court or something, I'm sure that has its own set of variations and everything, but everywhere you go in the world, the lines are the same. The hoop is at the same height, whereas climbing you can go deep water solo in Mallorca, or you can go crack climbing in Yosemite, or you can go bouldering in Fontainebleau, and everywhere is totally different and unique, and it's kind of totally different experience. So. I think it's just kind of unlimited amount of uh, variations and you know different kind of experiences. True lifestyle, sport, lifelong activity. I don't know if you could even call it a sport really. It's just this activity that we do and happens to be athletic. So certainly it's very, uh, very fun and, and rewarding, you know, just to be able to, when you see people go on, on trips and doing the, the typical tourist thing and go into the museums and you know, not really knowing what to do when they go on a trip, you know, when, as a climber you go on, on a trip and you have a specific, you know, it's really easy to know what to do. It's like we're going to go here and we're going to go climbing in this one spot and, and through that trip, through that experience, you, see, you have all these experiences meeting different people and kind of these cultural experiences along the way and uh, that's just one more example why climbing is just this really interesting sport and kind of uh, very multifaceted, I guess. Oh. I think one of the Skin coolest hurts. things about climbing, it's it obviously we want to push our physical limits and do something harder and harder, but that's not the only way to, to gauge improvement or success, right? There's so many other aspects in climbing, you know, seeing new places and focusing on different styles of climbing. I guess that's what, it's so easy to stay psyched on climbing because there's a million different ways to approach climbing. You know, you can go sport climbing, you can go trad climbing, bouldering, ice climbing, and uh, they're all really unique and different and connected in the same way, you know. Uh, there's our physical limit and trying to push ourselves to the next grade or something, and that's obviously super, super cool and um, always want to see how, how far we can push it. But then, there, you know, going to a new place is a, is a way of I don't know, improving our experience in some way and, you know, broadening our horizons as climbers, you know, so there's kind of infinite ways to, you know, continue, I guess, experiencing climbing in new ways. We just kind of keep pushing our limits bit by bit and 
we're not really aware of uh, how far we can go, you know, it's just work on a, a project that's kind of beyond my limits. It might seem just way too hard. And then over time, figure it out, figure out the moves and finally send it. And you're like, wow, well, maybe I can climb a little bit harder. So each time we kind of open up our eyes to the, the potential, our own potential, you know, and see that we can maybe push it a little bit farther. So I hope I just try to, you know, stay focused in that on the current task at hand. Yeah, I get scared all the time climbing and I think it's just that, you know, you got to calculate things and take calculated risks at certain points, you know, but I think it's really true as far as getting, getting hurt and having accidents, you know, it always does seem to happen when we're kind of not really paying attention or when we're not scared. So sometimes that fear kind of keeps us in check and keeps us on track and keeps us safe for sure. You know, there's times we have to really listen to that and then there's those moments when trying to send our project and you kind of just have to push through sometimes when you're on a, you have to skip a couple of clips and um, you know, I think sometimes also you just have to take the fall sometimes and prove to yourself that it's actually safer than it looks. So, you know, when you're on a boulder problem and you can't, just, you can't quite commit 100%, you know, sometimes I'll just jump up and touch the hold and take the fall and uh, and then after that, I'm like, oh, it was actually okay. I can maybe go for it a little bit harder. And the next time I feel a little freer to just go for it 100%. But uh, I definitely get scared and, and deal with that like everyone else, I guess. And um, I guess it's just one of the things that makes climbing interesting. You know, if it, <laughs> if it wasn't scary, right, it wouldn't be as fun. I mean, I think for sure climbing's the, the funnest activity I've ever done, but you, there's definitely days when I don't really feel like climbing and there's been moments in my life when I was, you know, psyched to do something else. And I think climbing is this lifelong pursuit and it's normal that there's moments when we're not as excited about it. And in that way, there's time, you know, throughout our life to experience different things and also you know, continue our, our love for climbing. But I think it's really important to follow our motivation and not force ourselves to go climbing just because we feel like we have to. You know, climbing something, it's not so profound like we're finding a cure to cancer or something. We're climbing because it makes us feel good. And if there's some moment that it doesn't feel good to climb, well, really, what's the point, right? And obviously, the, you know, if we're training, we have to push through certain barriers. It's kind of a different story, but. I've always had this kind of long-term approach and I just want to continue climbing for the rest of my life and um, climbing needs to be a, this fun thing and that's always been my, my motivation and it's just being inspired and being motivated by, by the climbs I see and it's really hard for me if I'm not in that, if I'm not inspired, if I try like a 511 I might fall off because it's just kind of like, you know, what am I doing up here, you know? It doesn't really make sense if, it, if you're not inspired. So I try to, you know, I climb when I feel inspired and, and that happens to be a lot of the time, but I guess, yeah, there's, uh, there's no big, it's no big deal if you're not, you know, that's, it'll come back again. One of the hard things for me is uh, you really have, you know, although we have endless motivation, we just want to be able to climb everything in reality it's not possible and we just have to focus our energy on certain projects and it's really easy to get kind of scattered and start trying a million different projects and then a year goes by and you don't do a single one of them because you know your energy is just too scattered so you know especially where I live in in Spain there's so many amazing cliffs and it's kind of overwhelming you don't know where to start and you don't know where to finish it's just kind of you can literally try a different route every day and there's so many cool things to try. So that's so, such a great thing, but it can be an obstacle at the same time. So you have to learn to like focus your energy and pick and choose the, the lines that are really important because otherwise it's just it's not possible to do everything. I mean, everyone has their own style, right? But I, I, have a, I have a lot of different routes I work on at the same time. 
I think just for my motivation and for for staying in shape, it's, it works really good working on different routes and staying psyched, not getting like bogged down in one route, falling in the same place over and over again. But at the same time, when I start getting closer to a route, it's kind of like time to focus and focus on one of them. So, you know, at the beginning of the season, I'll be working on lots of different routes and just trying to, you know, just playing around and, and having fun. I mean, that's for me the funnest thing, just trying different routes and trying new hard routes and figuring out the sequences and bolting new lines. But when I have that feeling like oh, I'm, I could be pretty close to doing this route, well, then it's time to kind of focus my energy. And, um, even still, though, it's important to mix it up because for, my, for me, my my way of, get, of training is just trying my project. So through working on these really hard routes over and over again um, and climbing day in, day out, you know, it's, you know, it's a way of training, you know, you're just you're kind of beating yourself down and trying all these routes that are at your limit and it kind of naturally makes you a better climber. And so, uh, but at the same time, when you're focusing on one route, on your, and you're really trying to red point it, it's actually easy to get out of shape at the same time because you know, maybe you only have one really good try in you a day. And so you know, maybe you'll warm up, you'll rest an hour or something, then you'll give your go. And maybe you'll fall off halfway up and, and you're kind of too tired to give it another good go that day. But you think, well, maybe I'll rest the rest of the day and I can try tomorrow. And the same thing happened. So you, in the in the end, like in two days, you just tried like two half roots or something like that. And so it's easy in that process to get out of shape. So I think it's good to mix it up and you know maybe have a couple of days when you're really focused on your projects, and then some days when you just go out and climb and and work random things or just climb whatever you want. So kind of mix the serious side and the playful side, and and find time to do both simultaneously. It's pretty important. So you can main, you know, continue improving and maintain your fitness and at the same time kind of focus and try to get something done, you know, so. Because if, if you're just always playing around and not re ever really focusing, well then you're never really going to see how far you can push it either, you know. So for me, red pointing hard routes has always been such a, a rewarding form of climbing because it's like, I want to see how far I can push it, really. What's the hardest thing I can actually climb? And that might take me, you know, six months, a year, or two years of work on a single route. But at the same time, you need to supplement that with just having fun and, and messing around and climbing lots of stuff so you can stay in shape and um, just stay inspired and keep it fresh. You know, it's really important to have that balance and um, a, taking it seriously and then at the same time not taking it so seriously. It's, a, it's not an easy balance, but it's really important to find that, you know, find that balance that you can, you're having fun and being playful and at the same time you're, you're like focused and, you know, taking it super seriously and it means something, uh, you know, it's like the most important thing in the world, you know, and at the same time it's like the most silly thing in the world, right? <laughs>